So during COVID, uh, especially, we we're doing a lot more with uh, a lot of attention on our online presence. Uh, and we're continuing to be able to broadcast our worship online. So where's the light? Hi, everyone at home. Thanks for joining us for worship this morning and being a part uh, with us. But uh, it's always nice to hear that there's still people at home watching and joining us from far distances. I don't know if we still have our Canadian folks uh, that joined Springvale thinking it was their Springvale and it was actually our Springvale. Uh, but hopefully they're still joining us for worship. But I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Doug Limeball um, as a surprise to you from your sister who wanted, to, wanted us to say hi to you and thank you for joining us for worship. We found out that you're joining us for online worship and wanted to surprise you a little bit. So thank you for joining in and being a part of it. All right, I invite you to please rise and join us in our call to worship that'll be on your screen, also in your bulletin. It is a good day to be here. It is a good day to give thanks. It is a good day to ask for help. It is a good day to be in holy community. And it is a good day to worship our Savior. Amen. Please remain standing and join us in our opening hymn, which is Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Hymn number 172. goodness it is so good to see you guys how are you there we go uh, we will make room we'll stretch things out we can make this happen welcome everyone thanks for being here again it is so good to see you guys always and thanks to those that brought their book bags but if you didn't bring it that's okay I've got something for you to take home and put on your book bag 
Uh, today we wanted to take this opportunity to bless you and bless your book bags uh, for this school year that you're already in. So how is school going? Good. You guys like your teachers? You like your classes? You turned in all your homework? <laughs> Not yet? Okay, that's good. But I'm... You're in preschool? That's awesome. That's really cool. But the one thing that each of you, when you go off to school, that you take with you all the time is what? Your book bag. Absolutely. And it carries your books and your lunch and things like that. The one thing that... You have peanut butter and jelly. That's awesome. What kind of jelly? Grape or strawberry? Grape. Grape. Okay. Very cool. Um, Joelle likes strawberry for some reason, but you know, you like strawberry too. All right. Very good. But the thing we wanted to remind you today is that just like you, your book bag goes with you every day to school, the other thing that goes with you every day to school is, see, man, they're already ahead of me. They're saying God already over here. God goes with you everywhere you go. He goes with you to school as well. But you know what else goes with you every day you go to school? The love and prayers of your whole church family. See, got you. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't think ahead of me on that one. <laughs> no, definitely. You've got, look around. Look at all these people. They love you so much, and they care about you so much, and they care about how you grow and how you learn and everything else, and they're praying for you all the time. And we wanted you to remember that, that God is with you and your church family is always behind you. So today we wanted to be able to give you something special that you can clip onto your backpack. It's got a fancy little metal clip right on the end. All you have to do is... Pinch it, opens it up, and then you can clip it on to a zipper or someplace else on your backpack. And each of these has a different saying on it. This one says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And another one says, dun, 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 may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. And another one is, I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. So what I wanted these to be is something that reminds you that God is with you all the time and that our prayers are with you all the time. So every time you see this on your backpack, remember that you're a child of God and that God goes with you even when you're at school. And another one says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. But we got lots of these. Um, so what I'm going to do is pass these around. Go ahead and pick one and take one. And if we run out for any reason, I've got a whole bunch more in this bag. So I'm going to take one. Go ahead and take those. Once everybody has one, you can put it on your bag now if you want, or just take it home with you and put it on your bag there. Do we need more? one and pass it down that way. <coughs> so as you have that, we're going to bless your backpacks, back, backpacks and you. You need one? <laughs> Everybody got one? Awesome. Very good. Excellent. All right. So let's pray and bless your backpacks. Lord, bless these backpacks and the children and youth who carry them as they begin yet another year of school. Give them peace when they feel nervous, focus when they feel distracted, energy when they feel tired. Open their minds to the lessons they will learn both in and outside the classroom. Help them to make friends that build one another up and be friends to those who need them. Guide them in making good choices as they grow in wisdom and maturity. Be ever present with them in the classroom, on the school bus, on the playground, and at home. And may they feel your loving care in all they do. Amen. Guys, know how much we love you. 
and how much we care about you and how much we're here for you all the time, even when you're at school, all right? We definitely do. And God is with you always. So God bless you. And we're praying for your school and for you and your teachers and everything else that this is a wonderful and blessed and safe school year for each of you. Sound good? time in our service where we share our joys and our concerns with one another. So let's we'll turn to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks every time we're able to come into your presence and gather as a holy community to seek your word, to seek your love, to seek your face. Lord, we could see that this morning with all the children that were gathered and excited to, to be here. Um, the joy that they bring, but also the gifts that they share. What a wonderful violin piece this morning that we were all blessed with. We're thankful for that, Lord. Lord, as we gather today, we also come to you with things that are on our heart, some that break our heart and some that fill our hearts. Lord, we continue to pray for our family, friends, and loved ones that are battling illness um, that uh, there's deep concern for their health and their future. And we ask that you, the great physician, be with each and every one, that you surround them with your love and your care, that you bless them with healing in this time, and that you give their families comfort and peace as they worry for their loved ones. Lord, we also ask that you be with all of our, our kids um, that you bless them in their school days and even outside of school, that you surround their schools with a hedge of protection and give them safety from evil over the course of this year and ongoing. And Lord, we give you thanks for birthdays and we give you thanks for healing that's taking place. We also give you thanks for uh, new people coming and just gathering with us for worship, whether it's here in the building or online. Uh, we also give you thanks for family that rearranges plans to make, make it a, possible to get together. Lord, that is a wonderful thing and a blessing for each and every one of us. But Lord, sometimes we know what to say. Other times we don't know what to say, and we don't know what to pray. Thank you for hearing the prayers that are on our hearts, even if we're not able to share them with our voice. And Lord, we also give thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave us a prayer for when we don't know what else to pray. And we lift it up to you now, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like now to invite our ushers to come as we share in a time of giving our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. stand for our doxology. Heavenly Father, we lift before you the gifts that have been given today in our plates, as well as those that have been given online. We lift up to you those that offer their time, their talents, and the gifts that you have given them to serve your people and your world. Lord, we ask that you bless all of these gifts and multiply them, and help us to use them to be the church that you are calling us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please continue standing and join us in our hymn of preparation, Here I Am, Lord. The words will be on the screen.
Amen. Please be seated. So today's readings will be from Proverbs chapter 22 and Mark chapter 10. So we'll go to Proverbs 22, verse 6. Start children off the way, I'm sorry, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. The little children and Jesus. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children on his, in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. May the Lord hear each of you pray to him instead of my words. Good morning, Father. We ask in a special way that you look down upon us with your patience, your grace, your love. Lord, what a blessing. How can we sit here? and hear the songs, see your children, see the talent they have, see their witness for you. The joy abounds. And now, Lord, we ask that your word come out, come bright, come, come everywhere for us and come in an understanding kind of way. We pray for that blessing on your servant. Your word guides and leads us. Your love holds us. Father, we pray, and hear the prayers of your people. Hear the prayers of those who are with us online. You tell us, you guide us, you teach us. You will be, just as we were told that the, you will be with our children as they travel. They will, you will also be with all of us in all of the matters that we have. We are so blessed, and we pray, Father, for your power and strength. Amen. Amen. Good morning once again. Over the past few weeks, we've spent a lot of time sharing and talking about small group ministries and how I believe that that is, that is the next faithful step in our spiritual development as disciples and as a church, and I hope that you've been praying about that and what that might look like for you. Today on Back to Church Sunday, we welcome new friends and old. We remember and celebrate the importance of Christian education and spiritual development as we bless our kids and their backpacks for this coming school year. We will also take some time to bless and commission the faithful servants from our church who have taken on the ministry of teaching and leading others, our kids, youth, and adults, about our faith. This is all a crucial part of our ministry as a church, not just making disciples, but helping to form and grow them in their faith so that they can go forth and serve in the way that God is calling them to. Isn't that what we're about? If we ever forget that our primary mission is to make disciples for Jesus Christ, then we've lost sight of who we are and what we are to be. It's an important thing that we do. And you can see the fruit of some of that that's happening already. Look at how many kids keep gathering up front. And they don't just come and sit there, they participate. They can buy her in sharing the, the uh, singing piece the other week. And then we have Viola today on violin. And how many of them want to volunteer to pray and everything else? That doesn't just happen by accident. It happens by someone sharing faith and sharing love and sharing Jesus with them and that becoming an important thing to them. We need to keep that up. This is why we put such a priority on children's church, on nursery, on Sunday school, on Bible study, on confirmation, on our YF ministry, our youth fellowship ministry, on vacation Bible school, and now even on our developing small group ministries. The two scriptures I chose for today speak to why this is such a priority for us. 
And I think we need to let Scripture keep reminding us of what we're to be about, who we are and whose we are. The first one comes from Proverbs 22, verse 6, and it's a short one, but it is such an important one. And I love Proverbs. Proverbs is the wisdom book. It's the the wisdom of God. There's 31 of them. If you want something for a daily devotion, pick one. There's 31. There's 31 days in the longest month that we have. So, you know, just go down the line and pick the one for that day and follow it along. But on this one, Proverbs 22, 6, it says this. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. How we raise our kids matters. Not just as parents, but even as a church. What we say is important is what's going to translate for them as important. If we say reading scripture is important, but they never see us crack open our Bible to read scripture, then they won't think it's important either. If they hear church is important, but we don't make going to church a priority, it's not going to be a priority to them. If we say Jesus is our Savior, but we don't live in such a way that shows them that Jesus is our Savior and someone that we need to be lifting up every day and falling on our knees before in times of trouble and even in times of joy, they're not going to know Jesus as that Savior. So how we raise our children will determine the kind of faith that they have and how they live it out. They're going to see that in their parents' actions, but they're also going to see it in our actions too. So it's important what we do for them. It's important what we do with them. Our second passage is from Mark 10. I love this passage. Hear it again. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. People were bringing little children to see Jesus. There's something about this guy. There's something about this Savior. There's something about who he was and who he continues to be. People were bringing their kids to him, not just to see him from a distance and say, oh, look, there's Jesus over there. They were bringing bringing their kids to Jesus so that he would take them, sit them on his lap, put his hands on them, and bless them because they knew that there was something about that connection with Jesus. But the disciples, not just random people, the disciples, people walking with Jesus every day, got so caught up in the importance of everything and all that that they were missing what was most important to Jesus. That's why he had to rebuke them and say, don't don't tell them to go away. Don't hinder them from coming to me. Let them come. In fact, it's to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. In other words, if you want to come into the kingdom of God, you've got to be like one of these little children, just excited to come and be in the presence of Jesus, to come and sit at his feet, to sit in his lap, to have him touch you and bless you and everything else. He was sharing that. That was such an important thing to him, and that's exactly what he did with these kids. Are we like the disciples sometimes and get so caught up in formality and importance and everything else that we put stumbling blocks in the way of people coming into the presence of Jesus? I hope not. And I think we do some really wonderful things to make it available for our kids to come to know Jesus. Again, we see the evidence of that. But it's something that we need to make sure that we are always on top of and watching out for. That we don't fall into the trappings of over-importance or anything else that we keep people from coming into the presence of Jesus. That we put stumbling blocks in the way based on maybe how they're dressed or how they act or how other things are in their their life, that we let judgment stand in the way of them coming into the presence of Jesus, because in that case, we'll probably hear a rebuke somewhere saying, let my children come. 
That's what we need to be about as Christian people. And we need to make sure that we're doing that each and every day. Throughout the Bible, God stresses the importance of sharing, spreading, and teaching the Word of God. In Deuteronomy, he goes as far as to say that people should write it on their hands and their foreheads, as well as attach it to the door frames of their homes. There's something really important about the Word of God. There's something really important about this Jesus that we need to have it before us all the time. Imagine writing it on your hand, sticking it on your forehead, so when you look in the mirror in the morning, you've got Scripture there telling you, hey, praise Jesus, I'm a child of God, live for Him today. You know, whatever that verse is that you need to hear, having it, putting it on the doorframe of your house so that you remember it always. What's over the doorframe at your house even now? Anybody have a Scripture passage written up there, something to remind you? At our house, we have a plaque over our door that says, as for me and my house, we will worship the Lord because we want that to be a daily reminder for us. Are we putting the word of God in front of us all the time? Are we making that an important piece that guides us each and every day? We should. We all need to know the truth of God, especially our children and youth. We need to put it in front of them all the time and let them know that it's not just important for them to know, it's important for all of us to know. In order to do this, we all need to be constantly connected to our faith in Jesus Christ. If you want to have that as something powerful and strong every single day, you need to be connected to this Jesus guy, just like those kids sitting in his lap. You need to be connected to who he is. You need to be drawing close to him in every possible way. And for whatever reason, in my goofy head this week, that brought to mind watching Pam vacuum at home. Don't ask me why, but it did. Because I try and vacuum, and I think I'm doing a good job, and inevitably, I miss stuff. So then she's got to run around with the vacuum and do everything. But how many of you have a vacuum cleaner with an extension cord on it? Anybody? Ours has that whole windy thing with a cord in it, and you pull it out until you get to that little tape mark. Why? Because you only have so much cord to be able to run the vacuum cleaner around your house, correct? So for me, I'm running around, and I vacuum, and then I unplug, and I go and plug in somewhere else, and I keep going. Pam, on the other hand, likes to see how far she can make that cord stretch. (laughs) So she gets everything, but she's really going, and I'm watching the cord stretch and and starting to bend in the outlet and finally snap and it stops working now she's still going so i've got to like run and grab it and and move it and try and plug it in someplace else or or whatever but it's that whole seeing how far we can stretch it before it'll finally stop working do we do that with our faith sometimes do we see how far we can stretch ourselves apart from Jesus and our connection with him, our strong connection with him, until it snaps and comes undone and we're not connected anymore? And I shared that story about the vacuum just to be funny, not to say anything about my wife's faith because she is always connected with Jesus and I don't want it seen any other way, so... But how often do we in our lives get so busy or distracted that we become far removed from our faith and become unplugged? I would argue that not just we individually or we as churches sometimes do this, I would say our country has done this as well. We have forgotten so we have gotten so comfortable assuming that we are a Christian nation that we have taken it for granted and have forgotten that it takes work to be a Christian nation, right? It takes work to be a Christian nation. It takes work to be a Christian. It takes work to be a Christian family. It takes work to be a Christian church. Staying connected to God is vital, and it takes intentional work on our part to do so. We can't just say we are and then not do anything about it. We can't just say we are and then go through the motions without it ever being real. We can't say we are and not have anyone ever see it lived out in our lives and then have them assume that everyone will know that that's the way it is. It takes intentional work 
If we say we're Christians, we should be praying. If we say we're Christians, we should be worshiping. If we say we're Christians, we should be serving. If we say we're Christians, it should be lived out in who we are. Just like parenting needs to be an intentional act on the parts of parents, disciple-making needs to be an intentional act on the part of all Christians and churches. Think of it this way. And I've heard the story, so I kind of know what I'm going to see. How many of you are here today because a parent shared their faith with you when you were young? How many of you are here today because a grandparent shared their faith with you when you were young? How many of you are here today because of a Sunday school teacher or another person in the church that shared their faith with you and had such an impression on you that it changed your life forever. Yeah. You're not here just because. You're here because of what God did in your life through someone else. It's not just about what the pastor does or what the choir does or anything else. It's about how each and every one of us live out our faith and how we share it. People before you shared their faith, and that is why you continue to grow in yours. That's why you continue to live it out. That is the cycle that the church has to continue to go through. The next generation then takes their faith and they share it with the next generation. They pour it into someone else. They let them know the importance of knowing this Jesus. That person's life changes, and then they go and do the same for someone else. We're pouring the love of God into our kids each and every week and hopefully each and every day over the course of the week, they're going to be the next generation of the church pouring God's love into someone else. But they're only going to know the importance of that and be able to do that as we model and share that with them, as we provide opportunities for them to know Christ more, as we provide opportunities for them to grow in their faith more. That is what we are about as a church. And if we cease to be about that, then what are we doing? The whole idea of being the church is to continue sharing the gospel good news of Jesus Christ and passing it on to next generations so that it keeps on going. The Great Commission tells us to go into all the world and share the love of God, correct? Baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we're supposed to be perpetuating this faith. We're supposed to be witnesses, and if we're witnesses, then we're sharing how we've experienced God in our lives so we bless other people and allow them to take and then share that witness with someone else. That's what it's always about. And that's why we need to make sure that we continue to strengthen those ministries and make those the most important thing that we do. That's what grows a church. That's what keeps it going. That's what keeps the legacy going forward beyond even us. We need to give the opportunity, we need to give people the opportunity to come into the presence of Jesus always. Everybody. We can't put stumbling blocks up. Just like a vacuum cleaner needs to stay plugged in in order to work, we need to stay plugged in to Christ in order to be the people, church, family, and country that God is calling us to be. If we look at Scripture, we see other people that noticed how important it was to stay connected with Jesus. If you remember from Scripture, there's a woman that had the bleeding disorder that fought through the crowd to get up to Jesus just close enough that she could touch his cloak. Not even him. She didn't even need him to see her. She just wanted to go and touch his cloak. And he felt power go from him, and he turned, and he found out who it was. And she was healed. And he let her know that her faith made her well. But there was something about that connection. There was something about just touching him, being in his presence, touching something about him that had power, that had incredible power. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. If we forget that there's power in who Jesus is, then what are we really about? Are we just celebrating something that happened one time in history, or do we realize that Jesus continues to work every single day? 
We've heard people in here share about healings that have taken place in people's lives that we've been praying for. If we listen closely, we can hear and we can even see how God is at work in the lives of those around us and has been at work even in our own lives. We don't worship a God who did miracles at one time. We worship a God that continues to be active in our lives. We just have to trust and remember that and believe in that and stay connected to that and live as though God is and always will be ever-present in our lives and doing amazing things because, again, there is power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Jesus healed the lepers by just touching them. He healed the blind by touching them. He healed the paralyzed by touching them. He even rose the dead and brought them back to life. People knew that there was something special about this Jesus. And there is, and we need to remember it. There's something about our Jesus that both then and now continues to bring. And hear these words, healing, hope, forgiveness, peace, comfort, salvation, and love. Hear those words? Hear them one more time. Healing. Hope, forgiveness, peace, comfort, salvation, and love. I didn't make up those words. Those words are in Scripture. I learned them from there. That's who Jesus is. But I have a question for you. How many of you have been in a situation where people are talking and you feel uncomfortable bringing up either that you're Christian or bringing up Jesus in those situations because you're afraid that someone might be offended. What is it about the time that we're living in that people get offended by Jesus? How can you get offended by anything, any one of those words? What's offensive about healing, hope, forgiveness, peace, comfort, salvation, and love? That's everything about who Jesus Christ is. That's all that he's about. That's all that he's always been about. And that's something that we should be wanting to powerfully share with everyone that we know, everyone that we come in contact with. We should want them to know our Jesus because we want them to know those things. But we're living in a time when other people would have us believe that there's something controversial about Jesus. The only controversial thing about Jesus is he will change your life forever. But that's not a bad thing. He'll bring forgiveness and healing and salvation in a way that will change your life forever and make it better. He'll change you. He'll change your family. He'll change your community. He'll change everything. That's the only controversial thing. There's nothing offensive about our Jesus. But our kids at school at times are hearing that Jesus is offensive. That Christian faith is offensive. And unless we're willing to say nothing offensive about our Jesus and share that with them and let them know the power of Jesus and that that is truth, not just something we made up and live in such a way that they see the truth of God living through us, they're going to be subject to what they hear from other people that think this Jesus is offensive. Again, healing, hope, forgiveness, peace, comfort, salvation, love, nothing offensive about any of those. And like I said, I didn't make those words up. That's what Scripture tells us Jesus is all about. We need this Jesus. <clears throat> the world needs this Jesus. And our kids especially need to know this Jesus. And the closer we are to him, the more we feel him and know that he is with us always. The closer we get our kids to him, the same will be true for them. So as we celebrate the ministries today that help to connect people to Christ, I ask each of you to reflect on two questions that I think are always important to our faith. In what ways are you going about staying connected to Jesus Christ? 
In what ways are you going about staying connected to Jesus Christ? How are you, and the second question, how are you helping to connect others to Jesus Christ? So how are you staying connected, and how are you helping to connect other people to our Jesus? The good news is this, there's room for you in our pews. There's room for you in our forming small groups. There's room for you in our Sunday school classes and children's church. There's room for you in our youth fellowship ministry. There's room for you in our roles for teachers, leaders, mentors, and facilitators. There's room for you in all of those ministries to come, plug in, get connected, grow individually, but also help others to connect and grow. We here at Springvale have tons of outlets and plenty of Jesus to share. All you need to do is come like a child of God and plug yourself in. Jesus will not hinder you, and neither will we. Amen? Amen. So one thing I'd like to do now, before we have our closing hymn, um, we have people that have stepped up to be leaders and teachers in our children's church as well as in YF. We have people in our congregation that are teachers in their regular life in the school system or in homeschooling and things like that. We want to take the opportunity today to bless and commission them for the work that God has blessed them for. Uh, so if you are a teacher or a leader, uh, whether it's with youth or kids or adults, I invite you to please stand. Even if you're a teacher in the schools. Excellent. First of all, thank you. Thank each of you for what you're doing. Um, there's going to be words up on the screen, and it'll say who says them. At one point, it'll be me, and then it'll be the teachers and leaders, and then it'll be the congregation, and then it's going to be all of us. Sound good? So we all get to participate. Hear these words and hear the blessing from God. God of creation, you have gifted these men and women with leadership, faithfulness, teaching skills, creativity, and curiosity. We pray you would fill them with the power and compassion of your Holy Spirit, Fill them with energy and insight into your word, the story of your faithful heart. Teachers and leaders. Congregation. We commit ourselves each to our part in this joyful task. May your steadfast, faithful, covenant love guide all we do. Amen. Again, thank you for what you do. Thank you for the difference that you make. Thank you for the blessing that you are. And thank you for sharing Jesus through your mission and your ministries. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks. Now that I had you sit down, I'll get everybody to stand up <laughs> and join us in our hymn of sending, which is This Little Light of Mine.
scripture from today reminded us that we all need to be children of God. So I figured a Sunday school song was appropriate for today. And I love that song. It's, it's a wonderful song. But it's also important to remind us that we've been given a gift. We've been in, given a gift of God's love in our life. Our lives have been changed because of the love of Jesus Christ. That is a light that shines in us. Jesus in scripture said that you are the light of the world. What an amazing turn of events that was. We always thought Jesus was, but he told his disciples and his people, you're the light of the world. When Jesus touches your heart and blesses you, you become his light. So we need to shine. We need to let it shine. We need to let other people see it shining, and we need to share it so that they begin to shine too. That is what we are all about. And that's what we do when we make disciples for Jesus Christ. Beloved, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go forth in peace and shine on. Amen.